Kia ora everyone and welcome to this live Facebook feed today. Uh, I'm joined by uh, with Martin Simpson from uh, Fraser, Fraser Engineering in Wingate. Uh, great to have you on, Martin. Yeah, thanks for having me, Campbell. Lovely to uh, hear from the outside world. <laughs> <laughs> you, you guys have been pretty busy still over the past uh, past while. Yeah, actually, I, I have never been busier uh, through the whole period, to be honest. Uh, obviously, uh, fighting to keep your uh, company in in business is uh, through uh, an extremely uh, tough period of time has actually been quite challenging. But uh, at the end of the day, I think we've uh, shook it off pretty well. And, uh, and you know, some of our um, customers that, uh, you know, they, they believe that we're an essential supplier. So we've been managed to get clearance as an essential supplier a little bit late, I must admit, but uh, we managed to do that through the uh, local uh, uh, Hutt Chamber of Commerce uh, from Helen there, which uh, was sensational in assisting us in that area. Uh, she's been doing an outstanding job. Uh, so Martin, do you want to tell people a little bit about um, your your business uh, yourself? Uh, and obviously you're located there in Wingate. So I'm very proud to have you here in the hut and, um, and the business has been here for some time. But do you want to give a bit of an oversight of what you do? Uh, and if anyone has any questions, please do post the way and we'll make sure they get covered as well. Yeah, no worries. Um, well, originally we were set up as a, uh, a machine shop where when uh, back in the, uh, you know, the 70s, 60s, where John, John Fraser started the business. Um, and he was uh, the first person to buy computer, um, computer-aided manufacturing technology. Uh, and he bought a, his first machine was a, a CNC lathe, and that was like state-of-the-art, off the planet. Um, and yeah, very risky, very, very uh, difficult to do. That was when manufacturing was seen, uh, seen to be um, uh, important. Um, and, uh, it, and, you know, it, it's taken 30 years for the cycle to come back around again. And now all of a sudden manufacturing is in vogue again. Um, and of course, you know, as, as we all know, manufacturing is probably the most important and most consistent part of our economy and the flow down effect and the benefits for, um, for all the people in this economy, uh, is, is very widespread. Um, so, uh, at the end, what we've done is we've actually uh, bought out a number of other companies over the years and we've uh, bought out a fire engine manufacturing company and we have uh, now established ourselves as a, uh, a leader in the field of uh, fire engine manufacturing and technology and we're developing lots of different products. Um, we've set up a branch in, a, in Australia, in Adelaide, um, and we uh, found that quite challenging, of course, through, through the the lockdown, because of our Australian customers were saying, you know, why aren't you up and going? And um, and uh, so we had to have a bring in skeleton staff slowly and, and build it up through the period of the, of the lockdown. Uh, but we maintained our, our our manufacturing capacity to a certain level. But uh, as everybody in New Zealand in business who's got the common sense will actually uh, understand that uh, to shut down production of, a, of millions of parts uh, for one or two months uh, is gonna have a huge uh, uh, effect and, and, and almost a tsunami when it catches up where you, you haven't actually, um, you know, you've got a you've got material sitting on the floor, uh, all those suppliers now wanna be paid, you've produced nothing, now all those parts have gotta be made produced, get to the floor, you've got guys waiting for all the parts that are coming through. So the effect on, um, on manufacturing business is going to be fairly severe. And I'm, I do fear that uh, many companies will, will struggle to uh, survive through this period. But, uh, but we managed to predict what was going to happen probably about two months before the, we, we got to the, to, to the lockdown so that we secured all our products and stock for the future so that we uh, we cemented our our position so uh, and so that was a uh, quite a challenging thing to do um, but really it's the just the the, the stopping of production uh, um, across you don't get time back time is something that uh, if you lose it you've either got to pay overtime or double time to try and recover it so the effect is is far reaching and a lot of people don't, don't haven't sort of 
considered that in uh, in many of the businesses. But uh, at the end of the day, we are we 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 have got a full order book, um, and of course, with the fires, um, um, you know, during the, uh, the the Christmas period in in Australia, um, had a huge effect on 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 their their market and in the market for us. Um, so we're now doing. Uh, Doing a lot more work in Australia, and we're getting a lot more inquiries uh, through our customers uh, uh, in, in that area, uh, through all sorts of areas from military to forestry to um, all different types of uh, metropolitan brigades throughout Australia. And we are slowly growing our our base over there. And um, yeah, no, it's uh, you know one thing that uh, the government do seem to uh, need to understand very clearly that. Um, You've got to have the will to succeed, and you've got to have the motivation and encouragement, and and um, and that's very important. If you if 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 you take that away from people that have worked all their lives to to create something, um, uh, if you take the will away, you you'll you'll do uh, uh, huge damage to uh, to manufacturing companies. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think it's been interesting to um, reflect, and I've, I've been going around to different um, businesses, whether that be out, out of Wingate where you are or down in Seaview, uh, to understand what the potential impacts or the flow on effects are. Uh, and it's quite clear that it is different for each business, but for um, businesses like yourself, um, it is that, I suppose, yeah, that loss of time and that flow through effect. And also uh, some, some of the feedback I've heard is that uh, there's some work currently now because that's sort of getting rid of what was there post uh, pre-COVID. But for some businesses, it's the it's the work in three months' time, which is is going to dry up, and that's when we start to see further impacts and and impacts and impacts on jobs and so forth. Is that the same sort of um, feeling that, that you're saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Um, you know, I've, I've, I'm in contact with a lot of manuf manufacturing companies, and a lot of them. Um, have uh, you know we everybody was doing pretty well right up to uh, to the lockdown, so they've got all the, a huge uh, backlog log of work. Um, but those the impacts are not yet felt by some of their suppliers and that some of their customers. So uh, as they all as their workflow starts to dry up, it, it may shrink through and have a huge impact on all the manufacturing companies around the Hutt Valley. Um, uh, so I, I certainly think that that's potentially going to be a big problem. Um, and the only way out of that is to, uh, for the government at the end of the day, probably to uh, keep putting money into um, infrastructure projects and, and various projects to try and keep that going. Um, and I think uh, there, you know, companies like yourself, we're fairly insulated uh, so far. We're actually looking at... Uh, investing in the latest uh, high-speed uh, laser cutting technology at the present moment. So one of the things we've been doing over the period is investigating smarter ways now of producing our products far faster than we have before. Even some of that may go that we may even try and partner up with some of the some of the other manufacturers around the Hutt Valley here to maybe shed some of the, the work if we can do a deal um, to have them produce work while we you know, potentially get tooled up or try and utilize some of our spread around our capacity that is another option for us but you know we've been doing product development um, as well over and we've come up with a couple of products which um, are potentially massive for us so we're going through the whole IP stage of that trying to figure out um, how much money to spend, you know, it's the old thing. And I always say to people, um, intellectual property, the benefits of that are that the government takes a third of their profit from intellectual property. So why shouldn't the government put up a third of the money for putting intellectual property in place? <laughs> I think it's a great idea. Um, but, uh, but, you know, the cost of actually creating IP is just mind boggling. And at the end of the day, all you have is speed to market, you know, create it, modify it, you know, improve it and keep that cycle going and keep on top of that wave as long as you can. And you could fall off that wave any time when somebody else comes in and trumps your product with something else. Mm. So, it's all about speed to market and getting uh, government to get their head around about assisting 
companies that have got solid rock solid products and ideas and they can actually get in behind them and actually say right, right we, this is a great idea potential is massive um, they've got to be careful doing it but i think you know they should seriously be, be looking at that to fast track this, some of this stuff hmm. no that's good that's good questions i think good feedback uh we can uh, i know i i bump into the odd minister so i might um i know you you had one around at your place recently so uh yeah, we'll, we'll maybe start lobbying them and start those conversations. Um, yeah, for sure. So yeah, but, during, the lock, during the lockdown, we did uh, have some interaction with the local hospitals. Um, so the heart hospital were, were fantastic. So um, they obviously wanted some face masks. So we developed a, a whole uh, disposable face shield uh, system uh, for them. Um, Joe, I'm, yeah. I'm going to be your model uh, today, Martin. So do you want to tell us a bit about these and, and what's happening? Yeah, no worries. Well, what we did, what we basically had to do is actually come up with a uh, um, a disposable shield so the guys can actually actually take off the, the, the front plastic piece and, and discard it. And uh, we had to try and make it as lightweight as possible. And using the, the key to this was using materials locally sourced. So the plastic material is actually produced at uh, Flight Plastics down the road here. So the aluminium is sourced. So this, is, this is from Flight? This, yep, that's yep, from Flight. Yep. And I believe that actually may be actually, uh, I believe it actually is recycled uh, plastic out of uh, Coke bottles and stuff like that. Uh, so they, they produced that. And so they were really good at, uh, very difficult to communicate through the lockdown where, where normally you would rock up and you'd say, hey, can you give me some samples? No, nah, it wasn't that easy. You couldn't get into the factory. You couldn't, and it made it very frustrating, very difficult to do. But in the end, we got there, and um, and I think the product is actually uh, is a pretty uh, solid product, and uh, and uh, I think we've sold uh, four thousand of the uh, actual plastic shields and uh, three or four hundred of the uh, actual uh, the full the full head union itself. But the difficult thing for the uh, for everybody, uh, including us, is actually sourcing those materials. We found that virtually no more plastic. You couldn't get it, and uh, that that was a was was a big issue. So the trick was trying to get. And I can assure you, I was running around like a madman trying to overcome all the problems of you know finding all the materials and then there's the design trying to make it lightweight comfortable uh and uh you know and and a face mask is a very personal thing for each person some might like it some won't so you you can't please everybody with the, with the product uh but in general that product filled a gap and actually gave people uh, a form of uh safety uh, when getting back to work or working in an hospital hospital environment, because it's uh, it's important that uh, you know uh, that people feel safe in in in, in the environment that we have. Oh, absolutely, and I, it's amazing how comfortable it is actually. So it's I mean I can wear this all day. So uh, yeah, and it's and it, and it works, and it's great to know that yeah people uh, you know our recycling started back up now around plastics. So when you put your recycling in, it goes to flight actually helping produce stuff like this which is pretty cool uh, so no complaints about that um, so Mark, how many people do you have um, working for you at, uh, at your site in Wingate? Uh, there's about 120 here at the present moment um, and currently we are always constantly looking for auto electricians, fabricators, um, you know normal human beings <laughs> <laughs> uh, I must stress that normal human beings that uh, you know we're not looking for anybody that's got uh, personal issues of any you know if you want to come here you tell the truth you'd be straight up you turn up for work you know uh, this is a family business and and uh, you know uh, out we take everybody uh, the owners of the company take things personally and uh, and we want to create a really good work environment and um, you know it's like you know, everybody talks about the Google and how they look after all this stuff. But that's, and I believe that it's actually uh, all New Zealand manufacturers want to create that great working environment. But you know, the cost imposed upon us, you know, um, by you know government, uh, health and safety, and all the rules that are surrounded us, um, uh, does impose a uh, disproportionate uh, cost uh, to run our businesses now. 
the only way to actually overcome that and uh, create better environments and everything else is actually to make it uh, easier and to assist us and getting, you know, the government needs to get involved with business. They've always had a hands-off approach to, uh, to, to businesses where, um, where I think those days are over. You know, we generate the money that fuels the economy uh, and manufacturing has probably been the most consistent um, ba base uh, for, for many years. And, you know, consecutive governments have always wanted to say, we've got tourism, we've got, uh, um, we've got the forestry, we've got dairy. Well, the news to them is that we actually are all one. Manufacturing go, crosses all those boundaries. You know, manufacturers make everything for all, the, all those areas and, and, and manufacturing is potentially the greatest um, value add to, to, to our uh, GDP. Well, by far. Mm. And, and it's about time they learned that. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And I think it's interesting when you talk to people here and because the, there's always conversations around, you know, the good old days in the hut and uh, obviously the, the car factories that were here and so forth. And there actually isn't an appreciation of um, how many operators there are and, and how and the cool things that are actually happening right in our own backyard at the moment. And we are sort of leading the space on that, that front. So um, you're an example of that, and there's there's others as well who are doing some pretty cool stuff. And uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We've just uh, just recently, just before lockdown, we bought out. Uh, um, I did a, a, a buyout with uh, Delta uh, Diecasting, so uh, to keep the foundry, which I've always been in, interested in keeping foundries here in Wellington as much as we can, is to we bought them out and and, and put them on our site here in in Wingate. So now we have absolute control over our own destiny with all our own castings, and uh, you know we make a couple hundred thousand castings for ourselves a year. So that is uh, that's a great opportunity for us to do more work and expand that uh, capability here in the in the Hutt Valley because uh, Delta was without without doubt one of the best foundries in in the country by far. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I'm just going to check to see if we've got any uh, questions that have come through. Uh, okay. Um, to... Okay. Is there any, um, so a question that's come through before as well, um, any advice, uh, Martin, that you'd have for um, businesses out there or, or I suppose the community generally around our response to COVID, um, how we can obviously innovate and change and adapt um, to what a new normal is going to look like uh, as we as we get through this. Um, any any tips that you have? Um, well, what we've done here is that very early on we actually put in this whole social distancing thing um, and making sure you know people are doing doing the right thing and training people about you know, you know wash their hands before they go to the toilet and then after they go to come come back out again. Um, and we've uh, split shift, we've done split shifts here. So the guys have actually, uh, which is working really well for us because um, you know, we're actually getting more production out at the same time. Uh, so that, that's been a, a good opportunity. Some guys want to come in early, some guys want to come in a bit later. That sort of fits and, and to be flexible, you know, to, to let people um, suit their lifestyle. If they've got kids and something in there, um, their stuff has changed a little bit. So I think, yeah, being quite flexible with the, with the workforce at the end of the day. Um, and the really good thing about, about this is that, especially for all the young guys, uh, is that they don't talk as much because they can't, they can't stand in a huddle and get close. So actually production is up. So they, they, they can't uh, you know, show each other their iPhones and do that sort of dumb thing. <laughs> they're not doing memes and stuff on you're yeah, not showing yeah, youtube so, videos so that has been that has been really good um because they just can't come together so uh so that's really really uh, uh changed their their approach to things and so in in, in especially with the young ones the product productivity is uh is increased uh, significantly it's a it's quite a, a big improvement for us so that's a big bonus but of course we've got uh, in every factory there's about six or seven factories here and so each factory has got their own sign in uh, social the tracing thing going on um, provided lots of uh, hand washing facilities and bits and pieces and so it's been quite a big investment and a lot of uh, work has gone into 
you know, when the guys come back to work, you've virtually got to train each individual person. You've got to understand their home situation, if they're catching public transport and all that sort of stuff and understand all that really well uh, to try and, uh, you know, if they are catching public transport, we, they, we put an extra uh, safety measure in place for them where they um, may have to wear stuff on uh, gloves and a mask on that to make sure that everybody else is actually comfortable. We even have been using um, uh, separate to toilets in each plant. They've got their own sort of toilets. So uh, if you've got uh, able to do that, that's been good for us. So you can separate the guys and, and, and you know, staggering all the smokos, all the lunch times, uh, making sure there's no, you know, you, there's, a, there's a flow of people and they're, they're turning around uh, and not sort of connecting as much uh, as, as they normally would do. So that's, we've learned quite a lot over that very early on, uh, how to try and minimise that. And I think all businesses in, 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 in the country, any manufacturer, any, any business coffee shop, they're all they're all doing it. You know, we see it everywhere. I, I, I really don't believe that I've seen a, a lot of people, uh, you, know, you know, doing the, the wrong thing for sure. Oh, no, t totally agree. And I think um, the, the one positive from all of that is, is also the resilience that it creates for our, for our businesses moving forward. If we ever have an event like this again, and we're not out of the woods yet, we never know it could, it could be a, another surge on it, but it, it does help create that resilience, I suppose, and gets people thinking a little bit differently. And hopefully some of that translates into um, where practical day-to-day -day operations when we're, into, when we're back into a sort of normal as, as usual, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly, uh, it, you know, you, if you get down and sort of, you know, get a bit depressed on it, which is probably what quite is, is easy enough to do, but I think you've got to hunt for the the opportunities and you've got to be, uh, you know, stay really positive. And it's, you know, some people have uh, uh, lost everything. Um, and I can tell you, not, not for a moment here did we think of phrases that uh, we were going to lose anything. And we were, we were driven to... Uh, to minimise the impact of this where we can. And as I say, I got a heap of my guys in slowly, bring them back in, training them through the whole COVID thing to slowly get up and back and going. You know, we targeted all our key um, areas, which was the machine shop. You know, we had a couple of guys machining parts and then we had the laser cutters running. And then we brought in powder coating and, and slowly staged it back up to get up to uh, maximum production. But uh, it certainly um, it's been bloody difficult to do and very stressful. And there's a lot going on uh, outside uh, that people don't see. But uh, uh, you know we're uh, yeah we're fully uh, comfortable with what we've achieved and um, and we're really uh, keen to to really ramp back up and 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 really uh, scale our production up and start investing again and, and getting right back into it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, thank you so much, Martin, for uh, joining myself on, on this on this Facebook Live. And I, I know that um, I think the story that you've got there and, and the work that you've been doing is, is really good for others to hear, whether that be in business or even just in our community generally, and knowing that you're here and doing some pretty cool stuff. Um, so thank you. Keep up the pretty pretty awesome work. And I know I'll be, be in, keep in touch and, and probably come down for a bit of a tour once things uh, settle down a little bit and we don't have any other... Um, social distancing requirements. So looking forward to coming down and, and um, do I get to ride in a fire truck or is that not? Oh, no, we, we can do no. something, I'm sure. We something can, like that. <laughs> we can bring that up, yeah, for sure. <laughs> no, that's cool. Hey, but thank you so much and uh, keep up the good work. No worries. All right, pleasure. Thank you. Cheers.